Well, hello everybody. I hope you can hear me. I've ordered my remote microphone. I still don't have it, but it has been shipped. That'll be another story to tell you when it arrives, the process of getting that thing, but it's on its way to me, I guess. I'm out in the hoopos this morning, as you no doubt can tell. This is November the 13th, and the coldest morning that we've had so far, the digital thermometer up at the house uh, says minus four. And in here in the Hoopos, there's a Minimax thermometer. And I'm assuming last night was the minimum temperature that we got. It says minus five. So there is a bit of a difference between here in the house and the Minimax is probably lower to the ground. So I think that's probably quite accurate. Anyway, I'm out here attempting another process to save my two fig trees in here. They've been planted in here for two years, and if you've been watching my videos previously, they make it through the winter, but all of the top growth from the ground up uh, dies. All of the buds on them die off, and it has to come up again from the roots, which means I'm not getting any figs out of it, even though the little trees are alive. Um, so I have I can't remember where I got this information from. <laughs> Someone once told me that if you don't remember where it came from, you can claim it as an original. Well, I won't do that. Either somebody left a comment on one of my videos and suggested the process that I'm about to show you, or I read it somewhere else. But I have been planning all summer to do this, so without further ado, I'll give you a little look at what I'm talking about. Well, that's one of the two trees, the smaller of the two. Not that the larger one is all that much bigger, but it does seem to be more hardy and has more branches and grew a little taller. I'll remove that uh, row cover in a moment and show you what I've done underneath. Uh, I've got two layers of spun bonded row cover over the top of it. Uh, I'm not really concerned with the amount of light that gets transmitted, so I don't care if two layers cuts down the light. I'm just trying to hold warmth inside there until spring. So I'll take off the cover and show you what's underneath there. Okay, the orange cable that you can see uh, is what they call electric heat tape. And uh, people here in northern climates that have problems with water pipes freezing, particularly in this area underneath mobile homes that aren't on uh, foundations with a furnace or whatever in the basement, uh, the plumbing underneath of them will frequently freeze in the wintertime. So you wrap it with this... Uh, um, electric tape. It's thermostatically controlled and any time that the temperature drops below 38 degrees Fahrenheit, I bought this in the US so all of the instructions that come with it are in Fahrenheit not Celsius, but any time that it goes below 38 degrees Fahrenheit it will turn on and produce a, a bit of heat. Now the, the packaging that came with it uh, said that this 30-foot unit, and that's what I bought, was 30 feet of it so that I could do both trees, just stretching it in between and wrapping it around both trees, uh, only draws 60 watts of electricity. <coughs> so for the time that it's running, that isn't any more expensive than running a 60-watt light bulb. Um, and with the two rows, two layers of spun bonded row cover over the top, I'm hoping that enough heat will trap in there to keep the plant, well it can go below freezing a bit, that isn't going to hurt it, so if it keeps it even just slightly below freezing, it will survive the winter. But when we get our minus 20 Celsius days here, um, in the past couple of years it's killed everything above ground both times. And I'll show you in a minute here, it has a little tester on it. Well, hopefully this will show the little tester that lets you know that it's working as well as how I've installed it. I've used these uh, Velcro plant ties, which I really like. I've had them now for a couple of years and I have just uh, tied it in two places, I think each of them in two places, on one of these spiral uh, uh, tomato stakes. I've also used a longer piece of the, of the Velcro 
to haul the branches in closer to the center or most of them. I see where I've got one more to work on here. I'm glad I uncovered this one. But anyway, what we're looking at here is the tester and I just saw it flash red. Anyway, there's a little test switch. If I press it, a little orange light comes on. I've done it a couple of times and didn't manage to get it on video yet. Let's see what we're doing here. see that that just lets you know that everything is functioning the way that it should there's all kinds of little circuits and transmis transmis blah, 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 you know whatever transistors is what I'm trying to say in that little clear area there and it has been shutting on and off on its own so I guess the temperature in here must be just about at the range where it starts to use it so we'll come back sometime midwinter and unveil for a day or for a few minutes and see how this is working. Thank you very much for watching. One last addition before I cover it up. That is a external uh, sensor that broadcasts temperature back to a state base station. I have two of the things. One that I bought myself and one that was given to me by one of my nieces as a Christmas gift last year. So I have one in the house and one in the cabin. Uh, this is the one in the cabin, and the cabin is only 25-30 feet from here. So I just put new batteries in it, and I'm going to put it underneath of all of the uh, spun-bonded row cover and that sort of thing. And hopefully when I go back to the cabin, it is broadcasting the temperature in here, so I can always know exactly how low it went, because just by pressing a button on the uh, base station it'll tell you what the lowest temperature was in the last 24 hours or so anyway let's go up to the cabin and see how it's working well that certainly seems to be working I checked the temperature before I went out and it said two degrees and now that it's in there and covered it has broadcast the temperature back to the station here it says it is seven degrees and these of course are temperatures in degrees Celsius and if I press the little button that I was talking about earlier, it will show you how cold it got outside here at the cabin last night. Minus four, which is the same as I had up at the house. So I, two of these things, and I guess that must make the temperature that much more accurate. And in the cabin right now, it is zero degrees. Obviously, I do not have a wood fire going. This kind of weather keeps up. I'll be out here soon enjoying a wood fire. Well, as I said before, thank you very much for watching.